Hey, ladies. Welcome to Blessed and Beautiful. And we are here this evening for the prayer corner. Um, I'm sorry I'm a little late. I was trying to get this out by 7. But um, a whole bunch of different things kept coming up today. So I'm trying to get this out as soon as I finish with this. It's not going to be long. So, first of all, I want to say come on in. Welcome, welcome. And I always say to everyone, if you are a slady welcome back come on in have a seat on the front row so glad to see you and if you are a visitor you do not have to be part of the slady squad to join in with us for prayer we acknowledge we invite everyone to come in and have a seat and join us for prayer so um, tonight I'm gonna start with a testimony and then I'm going to um, tell you what our scripture is. And I'm going to read a comment that someone left in our last um, prayer corner that was two weeks ago. So prayer corner is every second and fourth Friday. Second and fourth Friday. So this is the second Friday. So here we are. All right. So here's my testimony. Um, okay. First, let me point out. I'm sorry. I was supposed to do this first. This necklace and this earring set is from my daughter. She bought this for me at Christmas. And as you know, we haven't been able to go anywhere due to, you know, coronavirus and quarantine. And, you know, I know a lot of things are open, like the malls and movie theaters, but yeah, we're not going. So anyway, I really haven't had anywhere to go. So I decided to wear this this evening because I was going to bring her up in this testimony that I'm talking about. So here we go. Um, about, um, let's see, this is 2020. Yeah. About, uh, five years ago, maybe, um, we had a house and I was married at the time and my daughter and my son were with me and we had two bathrooms, one in the basement and one on the second floor where all the bedrooms were. Now the one in the basement had stopped working, um, a year or two prior to that, um, it kept running like the no matter what you did you jiggle the handle it just would not stop running and with it being all the way down in the um, basement and like we have like a club basement so you know no one's gonna come from the top floor all the way down to keep checking it to keep trying to get the toilet to stop making that running noise and so we just ended up turning it off all completely and then um, not long after that the toilet on the second floor the pipe that's underneath broke and um, we needed a new toilet. So our insurance covered the pipe some kind of way, but it did not cover getting a new toilet. Or if it did, it was going to be too much of a deductible. I'm not sure, but whatever happened, we did not have a new toilet. So um, the toilet would not flush on its own. Now, whenever anybody used the bathroom, we had to get a bucket and fill that bucket up, sit on the side of the tub fill the bucket up from the tub you know turn the tub water on and then dump that into the toilet to make the, the toilet fill so that it would push the water down so that happened um every single time anybody went to the bathroom now um i said i was married but i had two younger children um before the marriage and i pretty much took care of them and was flushing behind them so you know imagine you have to do this for yourself and now you have to do this for two other children so it just got to be a lot and i remember praying and just asking god to help us and you know time was going on and you know this became it probably wasn't as long as i thought it was at the time but i know it was it wasn't over a month but i know it was more than a week and it just got to be it got to the point where I was like, okay, God, you know, I'm praying. I'm still giving thanks. You know, I'm still going to church. You know, what's going on? You know, we need help with this. And sometimes it seems like at those times when it's the darkest, where, you know, you're just going through, when you don't have the money that you need. Um, if you're sick, um, you're having family issues, any of those times where it just seems to be so hard. Sometimes it just seems God is not listening. And for me, I realized later that that was a trial that God was putting us through. And I know some people say, you know, 
why would God allow things to happen? Then how would we be able to trust him? If we never needed anything, if we never, you know, had need of healing or, you know, finances, um, a new job, we would not have a reason to trust God. So it built our trust and it made us stronger. And um, I remember one day I sat on the side of the tub and I was filling up the, the bucket and I thought to myself, you know, a few years from now, we're going to look back and we're going to laugh. And I literally started laughing, sitting there, filling up this bucket with water. And my spirits were lifted. And after that, everything felt fine. I will tell you that within days, I can't remember exactly how many days, but within days, I got two envelopes in the mail. Now, we were going through some other issues as well. You know, you can imagine if we couldn't have our toilets fixed, we were behind on rent. We were behind on BGE. Um, I had stopped working a year or two earlier due to Crohn's disease and the bills were just piling up. We have emptied out all of our savings, everything. We went all the way down to, remember when they had like all the state quarters coming out and we had the map and you put the quarters in, we had took all of those out. That's how much we were in desperate need of finances so sitting on the side of the toilet i mean on the side of the tub that day i told you i started laughing and i was like you know one day we're gonna look back on this and everybody's gonna it's gonna be a funny story and immediately god made me feel better i just felt a lightness in my heart and within days we received two envelopes one was um from bge because we had applied to get um assistance with the energy bill and that letter erased the over three thousand dollar I didn't know I was gonna do this so It was $3,000 over for our BGE bill. And that paper that came, it, um, it erased that. And then it allowed us, um, it took money off. So every month when our, when our bill came, it was less. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I did not know that was going to happen. Um, so I'm just going to try to get through the rest of the story because I promised God that I was just going to send this. I don't have time to to um, edit or anything. I wanted to make sure I got it out this evening. So, um, so as I was saying, um. The, the check that came, it was, two, I'm sorry, it was two envelopes. The first envelope was from BGE and it said, it said, you do not have to um, worry about your bill. Um, and again, it was over $3,000 that we owed. And um, it so it erased that amount and then it gave us a grant. And so each month for, I believe it's a year, you get an amount to help you pay your PG BGE bill. So now that the bills have um, restarted and it's under, you know, we have to pay it again, um, it's lowered. So it allowed us, you know, that time to pay the bill and to keep up with the bills and, and give us a year to kind of get ourselves back on track. So it was such a blessing to receive that. But in addition to that, we got a check and the check was large. I can't remember I, to this day, I'm telling you, I was sitting here before we started trying to remember what the check was for. It may have been um, some old insurance because um, there was a lot of paperwork that went back and forth when I stopped working. Um, and I know I had to, um, I had found out that I was paying another company for uh, 
I can't remember what you call it, but you know, when you go out on sick leave and your job is not paying you, so this insurance money kicks in. So it's a dis additional insurance that you could purchase outside of your regular health insurance that went through your job. And um, so I believe that's what it was for, but it was, it was large. All I know is that the next moment I was just praising God. I was running through the house like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I cannot believe, you know, what God had done. And I really think that that night when I was sitting on the, um, on the side of the tub and I laughed that God said, now see you laughing and you knowing that you're going to look back on this and be like, you know, there was this funny story that was going on deep down. I knew that God was going to get us through. And so God said, you trusted me enough to know that. So. That's when everything got better. That was the trial that I had to make sure that God had to make sure that I could get through. And it also prepared me so that if something else happened afterwards, I could look back on that event and say, you know, God helped me then. He's going to help me now. I don't have any worries. So the verse, I, um, Excuse me. Whew. I didn't know it was going to be like this, y'all. <laughs> mm. But God is good. So, I have this app called YouVersion. Um, it's a Bible app on, um, you can get it through Google or Apple, the Apple Store, I believe. Um, and it gives you a verse every day. And so I don't know if you could see this, but um, this is the verse that came up for today. It gives you a verse. They have plans that you can choose and read. So if you're going through an illness, you need a new job, um, you just want to have more faith, anything that you can think of, there's a Bible plan there that you can read through. It's anywhere from three days to some of them are a month long. Some of them are a year long. It just depends on the plan. And it's really good at reminding you, you need to read your um, devotion and your um, verse for the day. Um, and it also connects you with friends. So you can read through the plans together or you can re read separately, but people will still see that you're meeting your goals and it even gives you badges. So it's like, Hey, you finished your plan. You've done five of them. Here's your badge. So for those people who are like, you know, kind of comparing it to video games, um, it does give you that, um, that little section where you can, um, earn badges and keep them in like your little room you go open it up and say hmm, i read 100 plans and i've highlighted 300 times so yeah that's in there that's funny too but let me get back on track so sorry this was not supposed to be this long okay so it's isaiah 26 and 4 and it says trust in the lord forever for the lord is an everlasting rock and i read i would i God gave me this testimony to go along with this to let you know that whenever you're going through something, everything's not going to always be great. You know, um, there are going to be times when you're still going to have financial issues, marital issues, um, something's going on on your job. Maybe your roof needs to be fixed and you don't have enough money. Um, you are being a mom to kids for uh, the homeschool and you have no idea what this new math is. Yeah, see, those things are going to come up and God is saying, I am your rock. Trust in me. Stand on the rock and know that everything is going to work out. And a rock is if you think of like a, a very large rock, I don't think of no little teeny rock. I'm talking a huge rock that kind of like on the shores of the beaches. One of the um, women that was given a um, kind of like an overview of the verse, she said that she remembered she was standing on a rock and the, cra the waves were crashing against the rock and the rock never moved. She said it was water spraying up on her. Um, you know, the waves were coming in, splashing against the rock, and she felt solid. The rock never moved. And that's how God is. He wants you to know that you can trust him. He's faithful. And if you put your trust in him, believe in him, 
and then through your child's become a stronger person and know more about him store the holy spirit in your heart so that when that next issue comes up you can look back and say if god did that for me before he's going to be able to do it again so that is the verse isaiah 26 and 4 i hope that you all write that down i do have my notebook that i'm keeping and y'all i need another pen i had a butter this one my butterfly pen it doesn't write anymore so i need another pen but i am keeping notes in the book and um i want to read to you one of our ladies comment that she put in our um prayer corner comments from last from i think it was september the 25th and her name is cheryl and it was a really good comment and um if you are here with us for prayer corner and you have any prayers i um ask you to go ahead put whatever requests you may have into the comment section and um we will we will include that in our prayer list for the um next two weeks and also include it in the next prayer corner so that um, you should know that we are praying. We are praying with you and for you, and we um, connect our faith to yours. Um, okay, so her comment. No, I don't want to listen. I just want to read the comment. Okay. Okay, her name is Cheryl, and she said, God does hear us. It is so amazing that as enormous as this world is, with all of the chaos and crisis that's going on in this world, God hears us when we pray. Cry out to him. That's because we matter. We matter to him. There is no prayer too small or too hard for God. So I encourage anyone who thinks that they do not matter to God or that your problem is too small and insignificant, please call out to God. He is right here waiting on you to open the door of your heart so that he can come in. And once he does, just watch God show up and show out. In Jesus' name, amen. So I really appreciated that comment um, as the her prayer that she included there. Um, I want this to be, the prayer corner, not to just be, you know, what I read or my testimonies. Please feel free to put your testimonies um, in the in the comment section as well or if you have a request that you don't want to put in the comment section but you're still desiring prayer I ask that you um, look down excuse me look down in the comment section for my email address and you can send that to me and I will put it in the book and remember to pray for you and with you um, but it will be you know between us it won't it won't be put on on here so that everybody can see your business you don't have to worry about that so um yeah so i'm so thankful for um the engagement that we're having that i'm into the interaction that i'm having with the with anybody who's um watching and viewing the prayers corner i'm sorry y'all i'm just so like i'm so overwhelmed i was not expecting that um testimony to really weigh on my heart um to remember what i was going through at that time and so i pray that god you know he knew i pray that it reaches you that it touches someone that someone out there who needs help will trust and believe that testimony is absolutely and positively true and it's just Things don't happen to us just for us. They happen to us for us to be able to help someone else who goes through it after us. We should be able to um, pray with them, lend a hand, help them out in whatever way we may need, we may be able to. So, you know, I pray that that testimony is helping someone. And before I go into our prayer and closing out, I want you to remember conversations with Lotus. And I wrote it. I hope that you can read it because it's very long, but it's actually those three words, 
conversationswithlotus.org. There is a, um, a blog there. Um, a friend of mine, she dealt with uh, abuse in her marriage and um, she's gone through a lot and she's um, she's feeling much better she's doing better um, she's now divorced and so what she does is she writes about some of her experiences um, and shares some of the so, you know the sources of help that she got um, the things that she's um, gotten through prayer and through studying the word and so you can um, read that um, read through there. I think she has about five entries so far. Um, so she just started it this summer. And so I just wanted to, um, put that out there for someone who may be going through, um, physical or mental abuse from, um, a spouse. Uh, so that is there. That's one of the ways that you can, um, read, get some information and even kind of make a plan for what you may need to do in your marriage, whether it's counseling, whether it's um, having to leave the marriage, all of that information, um, experiences and things like that are in the blog. So I just wanted to put that there, hoping that whoever needs it will read it. And so we've come to the end. I just want to say a very um, small, quick prayer about this. And um, I just, I just hope that you all got something from something from this um, prayer corner. I'm praying that it has reached someone. And um, so I'm just going to say a quick prayer and then we're going to close out. So dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you God for this um, this video, this edition of the prayers corner, Lord. And I just pray that uh, first we all, we just thank you, Lord, for this channel. We thank you God for speaking to me. And I pray, Lord, that um, that someone heard you through me and someone is unwilling to to just try you lord to 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 trust in you and to put their faith in you lord and um i just pray for everyone out there who is um viewing and listening to the prayer corner um whatever it is that they stand in need of whether it's um finances lord whether uh, someone is sick from coronavirus or someone has lost someone Due to coronavirus, I just pray for healing, Lord, for comfort. I'm praying for um, the teachers, the students, the staffs at schools and daycare centers where schools are opening up. Students are going and there's a lot of stress with parents who are now homeschooling or students who are in hybrid modes where they're some of the time in school, some of the time at home. Whatever it is, Lord, that they stand in need of, whether it's um, their health, um, their strength, Lord, their um, just their the time to breathe, especially if the with if there's someone home with the children all day that they're not used to teaching and you know making sure that the student is just engaged in school all day, you know that is something new for a lot of the moms and dads out there. So we just pray, Lord, that you just strengthen them and give them what they stand in need of, Lord. And we're also praying, God, um, if there's someone out there who is in financial need because they lost their job. Or their job has been closed for so long and their bills are piling up. Um, the leaders of the country, they're, they just seem to be at odds and there just seems to be no way out to help those who are in need. We just ask God that they put their trust in you, Lord, and that the resources that they need, the finances, that they will be blessed, Lord. That someone will be there to help them out. Um, that they will be able to seek out those resources that are available to them to get the help that they need, God. And... Um, also praying if there's anyone, Lord, who is dealing with abuse um, from a spouse, any time of domestic abuse, Lord, we pray, God, that um, that you touch them and um, give them what it, the resources that they need to help them to get out of that situation um, or to just take a break until their marriage can be made better. Whatever it is that they need, God, we're just praying and connecting our faith to theirs, Lord. And we just thank you, God. We thank you for this time. We thank you, God, that you um, tell us to trust you, to to know that you are eternal, you're immovable. And whenever we are shaken up, whenever um, we are having issues, Lord, you remain steadfast. Help us to reach out to you, Lord, for the stability that we need. And we always pray 
will put our trust in you. And we give you all praise, glory, and honor, Lord, for you are due. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much to everyone who's there. I'm going to be looking for prayer requests or um, testimonies, poems, uh, scriptures, whatever it is. I'm going to be looking for that in the um, comment section. And I hope to see you on our next Prayer Corner two weeks from now on the fourth Friday. All right. Bye.